Hello reformers and welcome back to Calradia 1417. As you can see we have now just gained the option to appoint a constable and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. It's pretty awesome actually because now we are going to be able to recruit units and, and troops and you know patrols and all kinds of wonderful stuff without having to do that ourselves so that's pretty cool. Otherwise, we are here at Hun Castle, and we are going to be going in with our siege tower. And uh, I took the plunge to get this siege tower up, to be honest, because I didn't really want to wait too long with taking these siege tower castles. Oh, there's actually a ladder? Are you serious? Oh my. Oh, this is really good. All right, give me, give me this. Give me this. All right. Yeah, now there is actually something else that uh, I should probably mention. It's kind of slightly important. It's the fact that we have been declared war against. Yes, the Vagiers are finally at war against someone else. And uh, those people in question are the Swadians. Yes, they are the Swadians. So, unfortunately, as a result of this, that does mean that, unfortunately, I now have a bit of a morale problem because I am using Swadian knights for the most part. And Swedian Knights are obviously going to start leaving and they're going to start affecting our morale in an adverse fashion. And that is not going to be very good. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do with those guys, I guess, if I am awarded something. I think we, when we awarded that castle way back, yeah, we were awarded that castle quite a while ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go back to that castle if I do start getting morale problems. And I'm just going to place units in there as much as I can. And then we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, for the most part, I think we are. We're, I think we're pretty good. I am actually getting shot pretty hardcore here. And oh, we did kill the guy. Oh, nice. We did kill the the vassal that was actually stationed here. That's pretty cool. Anyway, point is, I'm going to continue doing my damage with my little mace here. Unfortunately, the AI doesn't seem to want to come up the ladder. I think I probably have to tell them to follow me. And um, I'm, I'm, should I should I actually do that? Let's tell them to follow me. And then we'll see whether they'll actually do it. They might not. Oh, they are. No. No. No, they're actually not. Okay. Yeah, it seems like they don't do that. They, uh... I, I think what, what's happening with this right here is that they are thinking... They're thinking that, yes, I can... I can come up here. Oh, yeah. Maybe they can come up this way. Yeah. Oh, I'm being shot. No. Don't shoot me. How dare you. Oh damn. Okay, there's an old husk car. Come on, guys, get up the get up the ladder. Yeah, the main problem with the AI right here is that they are not knowing that there's a ladder. They are thinking to themselves, Ooh, I'd like to follow this person, i.e. me, but because of their pathing, they're just thinking to themselves, no, there's no ladder there, so they can't actually come up. But we do have we do have a couple of friends that are starting to come up. Ooh, yeah, this is fantastic. This is really good. Okay. Pretty happy with this. We've already eliminated 23 just by myself. That's pretty cool. I'm actually going to tell people to charge in now. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, my small commando unit is going to start doing some massive damage. Or should I say significant damage? Oh, yes. Significant. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can actually do something here. Maybe uh, maybe I should just stand back, actually. Because I've, I've actually done more than my fair share of the work so far. And it seems like the siege tower has now appeared in this area. Unfortunately, I'm not really able to see that much because there are trees and all kinds of things in this area. So that's obviously not great. But, well, we do get a front row seat, a front row seat to the action. And uh, maybe we will be okay here. This is, this is actually very tight. I'm not entirely sure how we're supposed to push through here. But I'm going to try my best. And I mean, I can't really do much more than I'm already doing. So, I mean, I've got a pretty massive weapon, so it's kind of difficult for me to get through in these tight areas. I don't know really how I'm supposed to uh, how I'm supposed to do that because I mean, you can see here already that all of our huskars they're getting they're getting stuck in as well. You know, they are contributing so much to this effort to push through, but it's such a tight space. It's just not it's not viable really, unfortunately. But I mean, at the very least, they are, they are using slightly smaller weapons than I am, so I, I guess they'll have a much easier time of being able to swing around. But, obviously, you know, that's just how it is. That's just how it is for them. And uh, I, I'm hopeful that we will be able to spread out reasonably soon, but you can see here that the, uh, 
the battlements here, they are just very, very difficult to work on, especially with a two-handed weapon like we have. Ooh, nice. Oh. <laughs> I was like, ooh, nice, we actually hit someone. And then the obligatory Kurgit skirmisher was just like, denied. And uh, he shot me in the face. So, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, these, uh, these particular layouts, I am quite loathful of these layouts. I'm not a big fan of these whatsoever. I think that they are kind of... Well, they're just annoying, really. They're just annoying. I, I think that they provide the defender with a little bit... Well, that's the thing. They're not even providing the defender with an advantage. They're basically just making it difficult for both sides to eliminate each other. So I don't know how this is going to go, but I can, I can kind of assume that we're going to achieve victory. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So far, I actually don't even have any major complaints about Cal Radio 1417. I've been playing it for quite some time now, and, uh, well, I, as I say, I, I basically only have one. I only have one real kind of, a, a kind of complaint that isn't actually anything really significant, and that's kind of amazing to me, because usually in mods I will have, a, you know, a, a couple of, you know, I mean, even in native, <laughs> even in native, I have a whole bunch of complaints. But anyway, the point is, is that this after death camera, this camera is probably the bane of my existence in this mod. This is the only thing that I really significantly do not like about it. And it's such a, it's such a minor thing. It's really not even something that I can really call a, uh, you know, a, a proper complaint, really, because, I mean, the only thing that it does is make it a little bit more difficult for me to show you what actually what's going on here, because, you know what I have to do? The only other mod that's actually had this was, I believe, a, uh, I think an early version of A Clash of Kings, and that was a while ago. I think it was, I don't know, version 2 or something like that, but anyway, point is, you move the camera with WASD, like this, but you can't move it you can't turn it, if you know what I mean. I can strafe from side to side and move it back and forth, but you need to use the numpad and the arrow keys on the numpad to be able to move around. So if you have a keyboard without a numpad, you will not be able to use this after-death camera, which obviously is a bit of an issue for some of you that may have a uh, slightly smaller keyboard due to it being like a slimline gaming edition or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, luckily I, I do have a numpad, but... I can imagine that if you don't, then it's going to be kind of harsh. And you can see, you know, the difficulties that I'm having with it, because obviously I have to look at this. See, I, I'm, I'm moving it, I'm turning it, but I can't turn it on the, uh, on the up and down unless I do this and then this. There's actually, what is it, how many buttons are there? There's like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's actually five, six, there's actually six buttons that you can press to change this camera. And I, I might be, I might be just, you know, nitpicking a little bit here, because I, I, I would assume that not many people would really care about the after-death camera. But I just thought I'd mention it anyway, just in case you are thinking of downloading it, and in which case you die, you know, because I'm obviously dying quite a bit. But if you, uh, if you're also dying a little bit, then, uh, well, you might want to know that the after-death camera, and maybe, maybe if the mod creator is actually going to, you know, watch this video at some point, who knows, maybe not, maybe yes, then it might be an idea. Ooh, nice armor. Yes, it might be an, an idea to, uh, you know, change the, uh, the after-death camera. I don't know how easy that is. Obviously, as I've said in previous episodes, I really do not know that much, if anything, about modding. I don't know how difficult it is to change these various features. I'm going to actually request that this castle be awarded to our husband, even though I, I'm not really going to be defending it or anything like that. So look at this. We've actually done a really nice job in connecting the Vegia territory together. And I'm actually thinking of taking Tolga and Ikemur as well. But we have to bear in mind that the, that the uh, I was going to say the Vegias. No, we have to bear in mind that the Swadians are now at war against us. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. Borcha has arrived with us, and let's tell Nizar that we want him to go and uh, do his own thing. We've never become queen, with the exception of Pendor, the original Pendor series. So it might be nice to be queen again at some point. Oh, there we go. Halmar has been awarded to Boyar Vlan. Okay, he didn't really do anything, but fine. I will stand by Prince Yaraglek's decision. 
And Boya Krahask is accompanying Boya Taisa. All right. Well, it's good to know, I guess. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. Otherwise, what I would say is that the mod is actually very well balanced. With maybe the exception of the fact that... I think someone actually did say this as well. They, you, you did mention this in the comments. That the recruiter guy might be a little bit powerful. Because, of course, the recruiter guy, you can basically get... As far as I'm aware, you can get... What, what is it now? You can get 20 Nord Huskals for 4,500 dinars. And it's pretty easy to come across that amount of money. You can basically do one tournament, and then you have enough to be able to get 40 Nord Huskals in one fell swoop. And then you can just murder everything. You know, you can just go anywhere you like and do any anything you want, really, because the Nord Huskals are obviously the best infantry units in the game. If you want to do field battles, then obviously Swadians are definitely something to consider there as well. But, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that as well, because obviously, you know, the, the mod is, uh, in my opinion, probably one of the more balanced mods, with the exception of that, because obviously it's not going to be as difficult as Parisno or Pendor or something like that, because it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be extremely difficult. It's meant to be a, uh, you know, a step up from regular native. And I like it. I like that. I like that. It gives you, it gives you just, just that slight, slight differences and additions that make the game that much more enjoyable. And I'm talking about even, even the sieges as well. The sieges are slightly, slightly different too. Obviously the, la the castle layouts are a little bit similar because, you know, there's a lot of modding, uh, what should we say, modeling work and, uh, you know, scene creation and stuff like that to do in, in creating a siege layout that is, you know, capable of handling the AI and all that stuff. So, you know, if people, if modders, you know, want to undertake a huge project, then obviously they're going to be doing, you know, stuff like that. But these kinds of mods, and I'm talking about the, the Calradia enhancement mods, I like these a lot because I like Calradia as a whole. And this is not taking away from Pendor or, or Parisno at all, because I like those worlds as well. But what I'm trying to say is that I really like the mods that expand upon native, but just enough to differentiate, differ, di yes, differentiate, God, yeah, please let me say that word, Ugh. anyway, point is, yes, they are different enough, there we go, let me just say that instead, I'll just avoid, avoid the word entirely, anyway, point is, yes, they, they do change themselves significantly enough to make it into a different experience. I know some people have actually had some problems with the, the Kurgit bows, by the way, and I'd recommend just updating using the update patch, because if you use the update patch, you won't have the overpowered Kurgit bows. That fixes that fixes things, because uh, apparently the Kurgit bows were uh, doing like, I think it was like 200 damage or something like that. So they, yeah, they're, they're a little bit powerful, a little bit powerful. Obviously that was a bit of an error there, but that's really nothing to worry about. Super easy to install a, uh, a patch for the mod. So yeah, nothing to worry about there. But yeah, as I, as I was saying, it's, uh, it's basically, I, I think it's probably one of the more balanced native expansions I've seen, even though most native expansions do seem quite balanced. And I'm talking about Floris here. Talking about, um, not to, I'm not sure if you can call Nova Aetis balanced because I haven't really played with each of the factions yet, so I can't really, I can't really comment on that. To be honest, I, I would definitely say that Nova Aetis is is definitely one of those mods that you want to get into after you've played a couple, because even, yeah, that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't get into it. I'm just saying that Nova Aetis is a little bit more. Mm, micromanagement intensive, a little bit more in depth, and by a little I mean quite a lot actually, because there are many, many more in depth systems. But if you want something that is, I, I would arguably say, more balanced than native, and I'm going to say more balanced, it is more balanced than native in my opinion. Native has its flaws 100%. Obviously, you know, I mean, Tailworlds knows this. They know. They know that Warband is is not a perfect machine. It is, you know, flawed in many ways, but it gives joy to many many people, and they you know they they're obviously you know listening to feedback and 
you know, doing all this stuff with, uh, you know, potential, you know, next games and so on. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, they know that that's, 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 the, that's the problem. You know, Siege Warfare, for example, that becomes a huge grind. You know, becomes a huge grind as, uh, as time goes on in, in native. And uh, having, uh, having a little bit of a difference on that is really, really fun. And Calradio 1417 does actually change things just a little bit to make it just a bit more bearable. Like, for example, I don't know whether you've noticed, but in every single Siege Tower siege that we've actually done so far, we have seen a, uh, an additional ladder. An additional ladder to the side. And that has basically made it so that I, or anyone, would be able to climb the ladder and contribute to the siege effort without having to wait for the siege tower to get to the walls. And that makes sense. You know, that makes so much sense because, you know, previously, you know, in native and, and indeed other mods as well, you don't have that. You basically just have the one siege tower and you just got to wait for the siege tower to reach the walls. And yeah, you know, there is a, an added degree of difficulty in that, but I personally feel like that's just artificial difficulty just intended to make it a little bit longer and a little bit more... Mm, shall we say a little bit putting yourself more in jeopardy putting your units more in jeopardy as well because you've really got to think ahead when you're doing a siege tower because if you you know start constructing it and it takes i don't know how much did it take at a hun castle just now it took like what 72 hours or something like that yeah so if it takes a huge amount of time then obviously you're going to need to be aware that you might be attacked by a vassal and then you might have some problems, you know, because these vassals, then they're, they're not, uh, they're not pushovers, that's for sure. But what I like about Carrot Cal Radius 1417 is the fact that it does do that. It does make every single faction viable, and uh, well, maybe with the exception of the Kurgits, because obviously the Kurgits, as I've said previously, they are not very good in sieges. And I mean, you know, I, 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 they can't be, you know, they, they can't be both good in field battles and in sieges. I think that might be a little bit, too, making them a little bit too powerful, of course, but it's, you know, it, it's balancing. And balancing when you have so many different factions is kind of difficult. I mean, if we look at games like, I don't know, look at games like Age of Empires or Starcraft or, um, I don't know, any any RTS or, or grand strategy game, then there are going to be differences in the factions. And the factions in general are going to be you know, they, they are going to be different, you know, every single time there's there's an addition or, you know, some improvement to StarCraft or, or even Warcraft 3, you know, there's always going to be something that changes the balance ever so slightly in, in favor of some faction or another. And it's difficult to balance the same kind of thing in regards to this and in, in, regards, to, in regards to Warbands factions. And I think Calradio 1417 has done a great job at that without compromising the initial feeling of native. They've done a very, really good job in basically making it so that Swadian knights are not the only option. Because obviously then every faction basically has a knight unit. And I'm talking about Rodox here, I'm talking about Vagirs and uh, Nords obviously do not have a knight as far as I'm aware. I, I, I at least hope they don't have a knight because Huskars are insane. But yeah, otherwise, then of, of course you have the Serenids. They also have their mounted unit. So the only people that do not have mounted units are Huskars, or shall we say Nords, and everyone else does have the, an, an equivalent to the Swadian Knight. So I think that's pretty cool. The way that they've done that is really cool because that has leveled the playing field significantly. And for people that want to play with a different faction and, and don't want to consistently go up against a huge amount of Swadian Knights or in, in general just have to fight and deal with Swadian Knights on, on the battlefield, then being able to pick a different faction and actually having a viability to that, that's pretty cool. But if of, of course, you know, that's not everyone's cup of tea. If you do like a uh, an alternate shall we say, a asymmetry to the balance, then obviously that's up to you. I killed 87. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I was just mindlessly killing every single thing that I could see right there because I was just talking about that that subject. But yeah, that's pretty amazing. 87, cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's head in. I have a very small amount of HP. I'm a bit worried here. Do not want to get myself killed. But yeah, 
That's the point. If you like the asymmetry, then obviously that's that's absolutely fine. You know, people love as asymmetrical multiplayer. I like asymmetrical multiplayer. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool when that kind of thing actually works. Because many times developers try to make an asymmetrical multiplayer game with, you know, different factions and, and uh, different abilities here and there. And it, it just doesn't work most of the time. Because either the player base is too small, unfortunately, or it just it's just because the balance is completely off. And I know I know there's one prime example of a really good asymmetrical multiplayer game, but it requires quite a bit of teamwork, and that is Natural Selection and Natural Selection 2. They are very, very good asymmetrical multiplayer games. And, uh, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I don't have a lot of experience in this game at all, so me commenting on this is... Don't quote me on this. But from what I've seen of it, it's cool. You know, it's a it's a great asymmetrical multiplayer game because it provides so much difference in each faction. There's there's unique feeling to every single unit that you take control over. And that's really cool. And I think they may have actually gotten the balance pretty pretty well done. Obviously, as I say, I don't have a lot of experience in it, so it's certainly something that you don't want to listen to me about too much, but you know, there's my two cents on it at the very least. I think that's a pretty cool example of, 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 of a game that's actually still, you know, going going pretty well. I think there's still quite a few people playing, but anyway, there we go. Uh, there we are, what should I say? Gar. I, <laughs> I said gar. Very good. Okay, I'm actually not even going to take anyone right here. Uh, I've got too many, too many units. And we're going to be requesting that be awarded to our husband. And we're actually going to go into the goods section here. And I'm just going to buy a little bit of food. There we go. All right. That's pretty fantastic. So let's go into the tavern here. Oh, yeah, we got a ransom broker. Yeah, there we go. Sell that for 2,200. We have a sword sister. We've got a guard here. Got Clethy, Marnid. Well, ugh, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get Marnid and I'll get Clethy as well. I'm actually going to be on the lookout for some additional companions as well. I know that someone actually did mention that it might be a fun idea to create a companion only army and see how that goes and that might actually be pretty fun i obviously have no idea how that would go because i i've never actually done that so i maybe i should do that maybe i should do that maybe that would be a, a pretty fun fun little uh, special thing to do at some point but i don't know I don't know whether that's going to happen, and then which mod, which mod to do it in. Maybe I should just do it in native. That would be kind of harsh, perhaps. But I'm just going to be accepting most of these, uh, most of these ransoms here. And we are ready. Look at that. We're ready to go. That is crazy. We've just literally not even lost that many people at all. It, it, I think, I think this is this is it really. I think we have a uh, a pretty surefire way of basically winning in any siege ever i think i think i think we probably do have that kind of thing going on for us right now shall we uh yeah there we go send off another person to spread the word about how amazing we are as a ruler of the land and so on and so forth so let's have a look and how uh, how many they have here tolga only has 306 i think we could probably do it so let's actually just go straight on in here and see if we can take all of their towns and uh, then we'll we'll see what we can do about maybe going after the Swadians, but, uh, oh, hello there, they're actually wanting to attack us, okay, so, this is actually kind of good for them, because we, they're going to outnumber us like no one's business, aren't they, yeah, look at that, minus eight battle advantage, we only have 29 on the battlefield, well, this is interesting, I don't, these are Kurgits, aren't they, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, this is bad. Okay, so stand closer, please. And we are going to be telling them to go into shield wall. Thank you very much. Okay, so... Oh, I, I, oh, I do have some cavalry. That's really bad. I really don't want to have cavalry right here. I'd much rather have all uh, all infantry, if at all possible. Okay, so can, can you just kill this guy? Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm going to tell my people to actually stand a little bit closer as well, because we're allowing people through, which is bad. Let's just try and kill them as, as fast as possible. There we go, take out that horse archer. Hopefully these horse archers are not going to react too 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 well to running into us. So the only thing I can really do is just try and murder 
as many people as get, uh, you know, as they get close. There's, oh, there's level 19. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, we took out one of the lords in question. Gonna tell my people to charge in. Gonna tell my infantry to charge in as well so that they can actually start doing some damage to the various people nearby. And, uh, wow. This is pretty crazy. You know what? I'm actually gonna change my gamma real quick so maybe you can see a little bit more. Alright, so there we go. There's my gamma raised. Hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more now. Because usually I like to have it on its default value so that things don't look super washed out on the world map when it's daytime. But obviously now it is night. So we kind of need that little bit of extra brightness to uh, actually see what's going on here. But we are defending against such an insane amount of units right now. And you can just see plainly how powerful the Nordhuskals actually are. And you can imagine... Just imagine this. I actually have quite a bit of money still. I have like, what? I don't know, 8,000, 9,000 or something like that. And if I desired, I could find the recruiter guy. And I could just get another, what? Another 40 Huskars. I could get another 40 Huskars right now. And that would mean everything. We would basically have the most unstoppable army on the, uh, well, in the land, in, in the land of Calradia, you know, we would have everything, basically. So it would be uh, pretty insane if that were to happen. I'm actually going to tell my forces to hold position over here. They are going to be attacking the cavalry, which is not good. I really do not want them to do that, but, oh well, never mind. I guess, I guess they will put them in shield wall anyway, just to make sure that they don't, uh, don't die too easily to the uh, enemy's horse archers and things like that, but I think we could probably retreat right now. Oh, we've only eliminated... Oh, we, I actually thought that we'd eliminated many more than that, but we've only eliminated about 85 of the enemy, but they've... Yeah. Do you see our longevity? Our longevity is so crazy. It is. Wow. Yeah, so... As I say, if you get to this point and you have so many Huskals, it really is just a, a matter of going through the battles and, uh, you know, just having a grand old time, really. Just having a grand old time. I don't even have the best armor right now. I mean, I have some pretty decent armor, but uh, I could definitely get some better armor, but it's very expensive. So obviously that's a bit of an issue, but yeah, I am uh, very pleased, suffice it to say. Very, very pleased indeed that we are so powerful and uh, I, I I don't actually think there's anything more for me to do so if you would like by all means leave me some suggestions in the comments what you want to see I see any do next because we have basically uh, basically it's just a formality you know basically everything right now is a formality we can basically just go anywhere and kill anything because you can see here we've lost one we've lost one unit to the overwhelming might of the Kurgit Hordes, and that is pretty impressive. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be retreating in, in a minute, and maybe we'll be able to leave as a result, because we've eliminated so many of them that it might make sense. So I'm actually going to try and move away from the enemy here. Hopefully no one's going to try and uh, kill me. Seems like there are a bunch that are trying to kill me right now. Oh, there we go. We can actually retreat. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, as you can see, we killed 152. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, we can actually leave if we want. So, we can actually leave and... Can I go into... Oh, I can actually... <laughs> wow. I can actually besiege this if I want to, but... What I'm actually going to do is end this episode off here. And as I say, leave your suggestions down in the comments about what you want me to do next, because... I could pretty easily take Tolga right now. I'm pretty sure. And uh, if you want me to, you know, create my own faction or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, the sky is indeed the limit in this case. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and for joining me, and I will see you next time.